What's up everybody? Today we have a sheer flow design example for all of you out there. We get a wide flange, we get a plate, we stick those things together. How does it all work? You're gonna find out if you don't know. I guarantee you this is something you will be learning. So make sure you're one step ahead of the game. We have a wide flange and actually up top, if you read through, they give you a little kind of real world taste of something that may happen that you can encounter as a structural engineer. Basically there was an error and the deck was already installed. So you couldn't uninstall it to replace the size of the beam. So as a solution, the engineer said, hey, we're gonna weld a plate to the underside of the wide flange to give it the additional capacity that it needs for the system. Um, something very realistic that you could run into and that you could have to solve in your professional career. We're given the capacity of the fillet welds, uh, so we don't need to do any calculations of the welds per the steel manual. Ultimately, we are tasked with determining how much weld we need to sufficiently attach the plate to the underside of the wide flange. All right, well, first of all, shear flow is the following equation. VQ over summation I, and uh, Q is equal to A D, and I usually like to say the following. This is just me, it helps me in my head, but ultimately, I think, makes things more clear. V was that shear capacity, or the shear demand on the beam, which was already given, so that was 40 kips, we already know that. We already have one thing solved, look at that, just two more things. And uh, D is the following equation. I call it Y bar minus the centroid of the object being attached. And summation I is the moment of inertia for your entire system, so the wide flange, and the plate in this instance. We need both of those combined into one for one total moment of inertia to use in our equation. And for those of you who are a little rusty with moment of inertia, today it's gonna to be the following equation. So the components of the wide flange and the components of the plate. I've uh, noted that with WF for wide flange and P for plate, obviously. You need the moment of inertia of the individual piece, so the wide flange and the plate. That's here, let's see if I go green, it's this and this, and then you also need the area of the component, so area wide flange, area of the plate, and then the distance from the centroid of that object back to the, uh, the Y bar of the entire system, or the centroid of the, of the whole system. And that's your D, WF, and D, P. What are our knowns already? Well, a wide flange, uh, a W18 by 50 is given. That is a standard size in the AISC steel manual. So you can go to the front chapter in, in section one and uh, go to that wide flange size and grab the area of the member. So that is AWF is equal to 14.7 inches squared. And you can also get the moment of inertia of the W18 by 50, which is 800 inches squared. And remember, it's your moment of inertia about the X axis because ultimately that's your X, X axis. Um, your members being you know loaded this way and then you're gonna have shear flow here and here. So you need I, I X. And that is what that 800, and I said inches squared, it's not squared. 800 inches to the fourth. Now, what about our plate? We scroll back up. Our plate is six inches and one half inch thick. So that's an area of plate, just six times 0.5 is three inches squared. Not a whole heck of a lot, but you're gonna see as you start attaching objects uh, that are you know, far from the, the centroid of the system, they actually can be, blah, 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 whoa. they can actually be really beneficial even though they, it's not a lot of material. Uh, so you'll see that in this problem. A plate, three inches squared. And what about I plate? Well, I plate, moment of inertia for I for just a rectangle we know is B D cubed over 12. Uh, I'll draw our plate here, that's our B, and the thickness of the plate is our D. And again, we are also taking it about the X, X axis because the load's coming down like that uh, from the, you know, from the wide flange above, blah, blah, blah. Well, that ultimately spits out IP. Should we just ignore it? That's nothing. Well. The, the moment of inertia itself is basically can be ignored. But there's another component, as we know up above here in this equation, to the, to the full equation. So uh, don't, uh, don't count it out yet. All right, I think that gives us everything to, oh no, it doesn't. Now uh, we actually need to find our D component 
of each one of our um, portions of the equation, so our wide flange portion and our plate portion. We need D. In order to find D, first we need, I'm gonna go green, Y bar. And I'm gonna scroll up to the top. Y bar is just, um, you can take it from any direction, well, you can take it from the top or from the bottom of the system. I'm gonna take it from the bottom. So basically, right at the bottom edge of the plate is my um, starting point. And then I'm gonna go and determine the centroid of the system. It is not the halfway up the wide flange because you have a plate there. If you just had a wide flange, it would be the midpoint height of the wide flange because that's, that's its centroid. But because we've installed this plate on the bottom, it shifts that centroid differently for the system now. And hence, that's how it actually ends up helping you based on the equations. Well, Y bar is just equal to area of the wide flange times, uh, what do I wanna call this? I'll call it C wide flange. And that is the distance from the axis that you're looking at. So this green line right here, up to the centroid of your object. So the centroid of the wide flange and then the other one would be the centroid of just your plate, which would be just to go to like here. So plus area of your plate times C plate. All of that over the summation of area. And that will be, because this is inches squared, this is inches, inches squared, inches, and this is inches squared. That gets rid of all your inches squared and leaves you with a Y bar in just inches. And that, that back when I was a younger engineer, that was something that I needed to go through to remind myself, like, is it the, is it the A's that cancel? Is it the, is it the distances that cancel out? I, I got confused sometimes, but that's how I just have ingrained it in my head and reminded myself. Y bar equals the following, 14.7 inches squared. We know that for the area of the wide flange. Well, what's the C of the wide flange? If I draw the wide flange over here, if you go to your steel manual, you need to know the, the height of your wide flange. This is a W18 uh, by 50. That means it's gonna be very, very close to 18 inches tall. In our instance, it is exactly 18 inches tall, but check out the steel manual. Um, just to be sure, so that's 18 inches. Then we have our plate down here, which is another one half inch. Make sure my big head's not in the way. So that gets us, because remember, we're going from this point down here, a distance for C wide flange equal to 18 inches over two plus one half inch. And that ultimately just gets you uh, nine and a half inches. So I'm gonna erase that, put that in, nine and a half plus area of the plate is three inches squared. We solve that above. And now we need to do, if I go blue line, we need to go the centroid of the plate to that starting line. So that's just one half divided by two, which is just a quarter inch. Go back to red, one quarter inch, divide all of that by um, the areas added together. That spits out the following, 7.93 inches. All right, now we have Y bar. Now we can solve uh, D for both of our components. And I'm gonna do that within the equation to solve for the summation of your moment of inertia. So summation I equals, we'll go parenthesis. You're gonna start with your moment of inertia of the wide flange, which is 800, plus the area of your wide flange, 14.7 inches squared. D is the distance from the centroid of your object to uh, the, the centroid of your system or that Y bar. So that means it's going to be, uh, for the wide flange, it's going to be nine uh, and a half inches minus 7.93 inches, AKA our Y bar. And your D is squared in the equation here. Ooh, did I forget to write that up top? Nope, I didn't, I didn't forget it. Going blue, there's your square, there's your square. And I'm going to bracket all that because that's our wide flange portion. And now we need to add our plate portion. Summation I equals the following. This piece is 834.2 inches to the fourth, and this component is uh, 179 inches to the fourth. So there you go if you're kind of looking through this equation. 
This basically equals zero right here. So you could almost ignore that. You pretty much can, it doesn't do anything. But that doesn't mean that you just ignore the moment of inertia contributing from the plate because you still have this whole other component of the equation that spit out, you know, 179 inches cubed, which is a solid, what, 25% uh, increase in your moment of inertia of your system. So that's like huge thumbs up. That just provided a lot of additional capacity. Remember that, think about it, think about it a little bit. I know that you're, some of you may just be learning this for the first time and you're just trying to crunch through the homework problem or that, you know, you got that test coming up with your Thanksgiving's right here. I know what's going on. I was there too, but think about these numbers. The larger your eye, basically the more capacity your member or your combined member has. That gets us a total summation of 10, 13 inches to the fourth. We're back at the top. If I go blue, we have summation I, we have V, now we need Q, and Q is A times D, and this is my hint to myself, of the item being attached. So that means it's A of the plate, AP, and it's DP. So let's go find Q. Three inches squared, and your D, you, you did already solve once, that's this right here for the plate. Plug in the same thing here, and that spits out 23.17 uh, this is inches cubed, because this is inches, this is inches, oh, squared, be multiplied together, get you inches cubed. Okay, wonderful. Now we have everything, so let's uh, let's solve this thing. And that spits out, we see our units, we have the uh, inches to the fourth on the bottom, inches to the third on the top, and then kips. So that'll get us uh, 0 0.915 kips per lineal inch, K-L-I. Okay, well, so we've solved this, but the problem's not done. It didn't ask for Q, uh, or lowercase Q. It asks, if I'm not throwing my pen everywhere, the minimum adequate weld pattern to connect the continuous plate to the wide flange. And they give us options of lengths of weld on a 12 inch on center spacing. And you can see based on the symbol here, they are welding each side, so they're gonna weld that part with the red that I just made and that part. So we have two lines of weld that are connecting the plate to the wide flange, so we need to consider that. What I would do, there's many ways to, depending on how you think about this, to cut this thing up. This is how I did it. This is your demand, but now you have two lines of weld. So I'm gonna divide this by two. That gets us 0 0.457 KLI. And uh, so that's per weld line. Next, I wanna get that KLI into feet. 0 0.457 kips over inches times 12 inches per foot. Cross out, cross out. Gets you 5.5 KLF per weld line. So that's, that's per foot length, that's how the demand. And then back at the top, we know we had a weld capacity already solved for us, equal to 2.78 kips per inch of weld. And so if we divide that, demand per foot divided by the capacity of inch of weld, that will get us 1.97 inches of weld per foot needed, which then to me, I would just round up and I would say we need two inches of weld every 12 inches, so two inches at 12. And I'll lock it in with a highlighter, boom. And as I go back up here, I'm gonna go green for good. I would choose, boom, B, two inches at 12 inches on center each side of plate. And you've just mastered shear flow. If you liked this today, give it a like down below. If you're kind of confused or if I did something wrong, obviously, let me know in the comments as always. And if you're still stewing for something else, hey, check out maybe one of these other videos for more PE example problems, SC review prep as I unroll more of these in my own studies. And if you think you're gonna be back in the auditorium again soon, consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my new content. I'm out of here. Have a great Thanksgiving. See everybody later. Peace. I did peace and then I didn't, and then I removed peace and said peace.